Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the week's long journey was worth it. Travelling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Welcome to Will Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Patch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? 
That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry, what did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. Sherry, I'm over here with my new ursine companion. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Can you satisfy my curiosity? You are fortunate to ask me, because I know that. Even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. Huh. And would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Is this familiar to you? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. 
Someone left their cane at my table. I suspect he will want it back. My apologies, sir, but I wouldn't know how to identify its owner. Hmm. So the simplest option ended in failure. That's irritating. No, what is irritating is you trying to break the rules of my game, Sherry. Don't be so lazy. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke! A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvellous. Simply marvellous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief.
Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. One man even lifted. At Cambridge, I... What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But the stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a sales. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? It adds so much atmosphere to the Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. A feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. <laughs> this brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Do you know anything about this? That's a question I can answer.
Rose de Moor. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Size four with a broken heel. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... No, what a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Could you help me? Hmm. You look like an honorable man. I have some information for you. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm a novelist documenting the supernatural and those who witness it now. Should you take a starring role in the tale, I will need your name. Oh my, a book? And you want to include me? I'm Lucia, Lucia Saleta. Something went wrong during the seance, Lucia, but no one will tell me what happened. You would be a valuable interview if you were there. I was, and I saw everything with my own eyes. Describe what happened during the seance. A lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest, a glowing cloud or a, a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did you? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost, a sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? Mm -hmm. the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. You lied to the poor girl, Sherry. Not a tease. She'll dream about being a character of that book. Surely a pleasant dream is better than no dream at all, John. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room.
It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behaviour in the hall. You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please, help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself, then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Barely an hour has passed, and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I...
not surprised. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. This must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Remarkably simple lock. Fard Rouge, Calomel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. Aha, uh -huh. a neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of this? Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. Virtus Audactus Abbot, Courage Tastes Bold, a unique family motto. Hmm, this ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. The mystery deepens, a victim with a checkered past, and poor taste. I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah, it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? It's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. 
Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewellery that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Someone was not happy with his post. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure the spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. I, I'm not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? I in fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man, but I never thought he would do that to his wife. 
Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh, well, at least I can make the dead talk. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewellery. Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... you are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out. But yes. I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink, 
all I suffered while she indulged. And I grabbed her throat. You already suffered at Miss Emma's hands once. I'm not convinced you deserve to suffer again. I can't help but notice the window latch seems faulty. Perhaps I should leave you here alone and fetch someone. I'm afraid it may take me some time. I... Uh... Oh. oh. Thank you. Thank you. The police won't notice your disappearance immediately. Run, leave Cordona, and try to lead a decent life. I won't forget your kindness. I owe you everything, Mr. Holmes. Stop wasting time. Run. Open the door, Mr. Galici. Don't make it worse. We know you're in there. Imbeciles, why are you dawdling? Step aside. <laughs> That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything. Even murder. And then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Mm, I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, damn. Well... Take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. A free ride for every hotel visitor. Just tell me where to go. Is everything all right? If you don't feel up to it, I won't tell anyone. It's just a goodbye, John. It won't be difficult. I've already come to terms with my mother's passing. So you really don't remember? To what do you refer? The funeral. Sherlock, you were distraught. At first, I thought this visit would dredge up those feelings, but you've been remarkably level. John, I think I was too young to understand. I couldn't fathom why she would leave me. Perhaps that pain is best left forgotten. On the contrary, it's why I'm visiting her grave. To remember her. Mycroft was adamant that we leave for London immediately after the funeral. He never told me why, but I saw how unsettled he was by the long requiem. The service was sparsely attended. Though my parents were buried separately, the pastors said they're united in heaven. I didn't believe him even then. I wanted to see her one last time before the coffin was interred and say how I loved her. The chance never came. 
I, I feel I rather faint. You're fine, you're fine. It's over now. You remembered everything. It will get easier soon. Pocket watch? It seems familiar, John. Why is it here? Rest in peace, Violet Holmes. Goodbye, Mother. This watch was a gift. My mother's initials are engraved on it. The piece is in good condition. It must have been placed here only recently. A candle in a small puddle of wax. It cannot have been lit for more than half an hour. Is this really how you want to spend this time? This is my mother's pocket watch, John. Who put it here and why? Are you not in the slightest bit interested? A man in fashionable shoes stood near the tomb. The size of the prince suggests he is approximately five and a half feet tall. You were about to tell me to make a model of Tyre, but let me assure you, I do not care. Hmm. Ah, that looks going to be very impressive. Come on then, the trail continues ahead. He mustn't be far away to leave it unattended. It's stained with oil paint. A portable easel was kept there. The hospital equipped. If memory serves, they're located at the far end of the cemetery around an old tree. I hope that inspiration strikes upon visiting these beautiful vaults. At the very least, you'll enjoy the view. Yours, Mercurio. An artist working in a cemetery? Do you think he'd paint my portrait? Oh, it's that ridiculous artist from the hotel. Be nice, Sherry. Make friends. Mr. Holmes, did you come for another portrait? <laughs> no, no, I jest. You gave quite the performance last night. The hotel was abuzz with your name. I must say I was rather absorbed in it all. The fallibility of men. Such scandal. It was a welcome distraction. Oh, my manners. I am Werner Vogel, art enthusiast and gallery proprietor. Mr. Vogel, I was perhaps too curt when last we spoke. Speak no more of it. Travel takes it out of any man, never mind when this is your destination. Once I learned who you were, the pieces fell into place. Your mother was well liked on Cadona in her time here. I was sorry to hear of her passing. How did you come to possess my mother's pocket watch? Oh my! It is quite something to witness those powers of deduction firsthand. Yes, I... I left you her timepiece. After her death, there was an estate sale. 
all of Cordona's elite picking of her remains. I couldn't let such a lovely thing go to those vultures. When I learned your name, I could no longer keep the watch in good conscience. It is yours by right, and I knew you'd find it here. Thank you. I've forgotten all about it, but the moment I saw it, I knew it was hers. Amazing what the young mind forgets and the older can recall. Rather odd, loitering in a cemetery. I suspect you'll win, but I'm here for my art. There's beauty everywhere if you look, even in decay. A little darkness brings out the light. Now, a diligent observer might note that you too are loitering in a cemetery. What brings you here? Closure, answers penance? Closure, I suppose. And what is closure? Mere proximity? Understanding. Acceptance. You didn't understand from afar. You had to come here to accept the truth of her death? Of course I understand. She died of consumption, drowning in her own blood. Your mother? Yes, my mother. Hmm. I must have been misinformed. I'd heard otherwise. Otherwise than consumption? No, no. You'd know better than I. I'd heard talk of a police investigation, but Cordona is a notorious gossip. Now what does it matter? She's passed on either way. She has. Well, I shall intrude no longer. I leave you to your closure. Do stop by the gallery if your travels permit. Farewell. Are you all right, Sherry? Take as long as you need. Hmm. Whatever I need, it isn't here. We should explore Cordona. Perhaps there are archives that may shed further light. Stark do this, Stark do that. I'm not a clerk, damn it. How am I supposed to get those records now? Yes? What is it? Would you like to report a crime? No, I wouldn't. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I want to use the police archives. Wouldn't we all? I'm serious. So am I. Officer Logan locked himself inside and he's not letting anyone in. What happened exactly? A tailoress from Scaladio has been robbed. Logan spent two whole days at the shop sketching the thief and she still insists that it's all wrong. That shrew drove him up the wall, she did. Would you mind if I talk to this tailoress? I could get you the sketch in no time. Get off your high horse, mister. You think you're better than our sketch artist? Actually, I'm quite certain I am. 
Let me prove it. Well, I see no harm in it, as long as it gets Logan out of there. In fact, I need to look up some records too. Here's the address. Good luck. I'm pleased to meet you, Mom. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm here to sketch the thief for the police investigation. Oh, what another one. I hope you'll be more patient than the previous sketches, Signore. I suggest we do it differently. You have a great many clothes here, haven't you? Why, of course, but they're not for sale. I only do tailoring and mending. No matter. I'll attempt to disguise myself as the thief, and you'll tell me if I get it right. As you wish, Signor Holmes. Can you describe the thief for me? He was all ugly and beat up looking. An utter rascal, if ever I'd seen one. He gave me a nasty look from behind his glasses and then made himself scarce. And that's it? Could you be more specific? He was a total villain, I told you. How much more specific do you want me to be? All right, never mind. Where can I find the clothes? They're in my workshop, at the back. Uh, be careful, won't you? This old chap putting on airs like some Italian doge. Why don't you disguise yourself as him instead? We have a job to do, John. Oh, come on, at least do him first. as alike as two peas. Uh, perhaps you have some royal blood in you too. That is flattering, I suppose, but I sincerely doubt it, Mum. He's a doge. Now that's a deduction. He's not an actual doge. If you say so, my lord, the doge. It's you! I mean, it's him! He 
It's him! Excellent. Now I can make a sketch and take it to the police. Yes, sir. Please do. That rascal is still on the loose. I hope they are better at catching than sketching. Before I go, Mum, are you quite certain that you don't have any clothes to sell? Well, I suppose you can take the police uniform. An officer forgot it here years ago, and I don't have any use for it. If you want to buy clothes, visit the Outfitters. You can find them all over Codorna. I hear they even do free rentals now. Let me show you where the nearest one is. Thank you very much. Hello again, officer. I've spoken to the tailoress and made a sketch of the thief. It was child's play. No, really? And she didn't give you any trouble? No, no trouble at all. She was quite tolerable. Huh. Who would have thought? Hey, Logan, we've got the sketch. Come on out. Can I use the archives now? Well, they're generally not accessible to the public. But you really helped us out, so I'll just turn a blind eye. I appreciate it, officer. What did you say your name was? Holmes, come and see me after you're done. I may have a proposition for you, Mr. Holmes. John, I just recalled that we were living here on Cordona, in a manor, and there was a policeman. Really? What else do you remember? What happened to our mother? The memory was vague, a, a mere flash. I have to find our house. Absolutely. Let's do it. I'm done with the archives for now. Can I help you with anything else? As a matter of fact, you can. The thing is, our chief inspector has vanished, as if we weren't undermanned enough as it is. Wait, what do you mean, vanished? Gone missing on a case. Shady business, but that's besides the point. See that board? 
Pending cases are posted there for any available officers to investigate. I would take them myself, except that I've been told to work the reception desk, like some clerk. Yes, we're that short-handed. I understand your predicament, but what does any of it have to do with me? I may be available, but I'm certainly not an officer. Oh, don't worry about it. Consider yourself a temporary one-man independent police force. That's a bit of a mouthful. There's just one small, minor, basic formality. You'll need to complete our physical training course. Easy. Well, I'm not one to balk at a spot of exercise. What must I do? That's the spirit. Sergeant Ermy will show you the ropes. Follow me. So, you're a newcomer. We must be desperate to ask untrained civilians for help. You're lucky to have a well-trained civilian with a brand new auto pistol in his arsenal. An automatic? A bit of a braggart, aren't you? Are you trying to test me already? That is why you're here, boy. I need to verify your skills before I can allow you to catch criminals. The first targets are in the next room. You know what to do with them. I'll join you in a while to see the results. Concentrate, Sherry. You need to hit every target to show the sergeant how we do it. to the next room. Meanwhile, I'll fill out the paperwork. Come on, Sherry. It's just like in childhood. <laughs> Steady, Sherry. Steady. And go. <gasps> My favourite mannequins for attack. Let's strike them ninja style. Aim for where you might take advantage, and don't forget the environment. I could do this all day. Please don't, Sherry. We don't have that much time. Let's move on. Our enemies might be stronger than us, but we rely on our wits. Shoot off their armor. Alright, let's move on, Sherry. If you stand here and use your snuffbox on them, you can definitely overcome them, Sherry. It's all calculated. Look at that helmet of his. You won't be able to get the powder past it. Helpful advice, John. I would never have guessed. Good job, new boy. Well, I'm almost finished with the paperwork. Let's talk about your results. Well, I must say your results aren't as bad as I feared. Perhaps you're not completely hopeless, but true combat is quite different from shooting stationary targets. I'll handle it just as easily. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Now, we'll test you against our men. Your task is to detain them, not to kill them. So don't go shooting anyone in the eye. That goes for in the field as well. Even though you'll be working with the police department, that doesn't mean you have a license to kill. Here, take these. They are blank rounds. So, are you ready? Always ready. Then let's get cracking. Worried? Not at all. I can hit them all with one shot. Good luck, Sherry. And remember, the surroundings are your playground. I'm coming. No more crime for you until next month.
I couldn't miss the party. Dodge this! Simple. The snuff's ready. Time to knock this guy out. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. That's enough. You've proved yourself. Congratulations on the arrests. I can't believe you did so well with the close combat. I did tell you that I'm well trained. Well, do the same on the street, and you'll be well rewarded for every arrest you make. Here is your certificate. You are now an authorized crime scene consultant. Well, it's now your duty to make this city a safer place. Cordona won't ever forget it, but at the same time, it will never remember. I'll tell Stark all the necessary details about your successful certification. Congratulations. Now you're a certified crime scene consultant. Congratulations. Thank you, my friend. Now, shall we head for Stonewood Manor? Don't know. You have the whole island to investigate. It's all up to you. Hey, Sherry, there's post here, but it seems as if the letter was delivered recently. After reading that, I am even less eager to return home than before. Let's investigate our manor. That's the Mycroft I know. Predictable. There she is. Our old manor. It's smaller than I remember. You were a couple of feet shorter back then, Sherry. Or maybe it's bigger on the inside. Look at the ash all over the door. 
I don't recall hearing of a fire. We don't have to stay here. You can afford another night or two at the hotel. Hmm. It's stuck. Oh well, let's just head back. They probably haven't even stripped our room yet. Come on. <clears throat> Must be locked. Move aside. Let me have a go. Seems fine to me, Sherry. This barrier. Perhaps it's mental, not physical. Or perhaps the rest of us are simply constrained by reality, John. I wonder if there's a key secreted somewhere in the garden. Take a look around, Sherlock. I'm sure you'll discover something. I did not expect these to still be here. It was enjoyable to practice using real handcuffs to make an arrest. An irreplaceable tool for catching a thief. And this must be the reason our suspect was apprehended. Wood and glass are very precious. Hey, that's Wooden Joe. He was always the best at playing criminals. Funny. Wooden Joe reminds me of the trouble we once got in with the police. Do you remember, John? Hmm, somewhat. Maybe we can recall more details. The policeman brought us both home, John. That's why he was here. I'm pretty sure he brought something else with him, too. Do you remember what it was? I bet it was our reward. No, we were not so lucky. It was a set of lockpicks that we had used to sneak into someone's house. That's why we were arrested. Did someone come out to investigate all the commotion? It was Mycroft. He smoothed things over and convinced the policeman not to press charges. The officer left and never returned. But we had to endure a serious talking to from my brother. Mycroft wasn't happy about the fact that we were arrested. It felt like he lectured us for hours. Did we give him something afterwards, Sherry? Oh, yes. Yes, now I remember. It was a letter. That's why we snuck into the house. Mycroft asked us to. He wasn't angry we stole, but that we got caught. Ah, oh, that's right. It must have been only a couple of months after we moved to Cordona. Oh, the good old days. Whoa. How very odd. It appears that memory stood between me and the manor. It, it's as if my mind palace had seeped into the real world. This deserves further investigation. Perhaps there's more to discover inside. As long as there is a comfortable place to put my feet up, I'll be happy. Maybe a chaise long. Aha! In we go. Home sweet home, Sherry. One of the first things I saw when entering this house as a child. It's like deja vu. And I was wondering why it's so empty in here. There may be a small chance that some of our property could be found among local traders' wares. It is worth... Look, wouldn't you say? Hey, this is the luggage we brought from London, isn't it? A 
another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Mycroft's umbrella. The only outgoing thing in his wardrobe. Another memory incoming, Sherry. Strange. I struggle to recall anything about the day we moved in. The only detail I'm sure of is that it was raining early that morning. This trip was a challenge for our mother. I try to help her. Our mother brought a slew of belongings with her. She refused to leave a single thing in London. Mycroft had to spend the whole day dealing with it. There was always a hat on our stand, but I'm sure it did not belong to Mycroft. Do you feel it? Is it the air shimmering, or is it my imagination? Your neighbors will be told that Mrs. Holmes is suffering from tuberculosis. It is common to move closer to the sea in such cases. Thank you, Dr. Richter. No, Sherlock, step away from her. Upstairs, go to your room. Lean on me, mother. Take your time. Actually, I never heard her coughing. I remember now. I feel dizzy. It's stuffy in here, isn't it? John, are you all right? I'll be okay in a minute. <clears throat> How about we uh, find our room in the meantime? Remember how angry Mycroft was about these marks. He called it a frivolous, childish endeavor. I think our family portrait used to hang here. This, it's like traveling 10 years into the past with a single step. Oddly satisfying. Need to repeat this one day, but with bullets.
coal dust from Miner's End, sandy dirt from the old city. We scoured the island top to bottom for these soil samples. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Look at this, John. Remember how desperately I wanted to learn the violin? I never had a proper opportunity. Such a shame. I always hated the rule about being silent in this place. The only fiction book on my table. I can still hear my mother reading it to me. So many pleasant evenings were spent here with the Encyclopedia Americana. Interesting. What's that over there? This doorknob has a cross-shaped end. Too intricate to be merely a handle. You know what? That definitely looks like a key. Let's poke around and see if we can find any secrets. Nah, doesn't fit here. Perfect match. My small archive of crime clippings. Maybe I should pick up this habit again. Made of cherry wood, father's favorite. Still has a faint odor of tobacco, one of the few things on this island that smell like home. I knew you'd find it in no time. Oh, oh, it reminds me of our neighbor. He had the same balloon in his yard, only bigger. Do you remember? Yes. We visited him several times while living here. Wasn't that neighbour missing a finger? That does sound vaguely familiar. Wasn't his name, uh, Theodore? Theodore Gilden, perhaps? It's the perfect time to investigate.
That wretch Goliath would murder us all. Mark my words. As if they were struck by a battering ram. I wonder how we managed not to hear any of this. Destruction and trampled ground. Destruction and trampled ground. An amount of attention that most can only dream of. A strong pull broke this leash. the elephant with this. Really, people are hopeless. <sighs> a pool of blood and saliva, possibly as a result of impact. Sherlock, take a picture of the footprint. It's valuable evidence. This photograph can help us find the old article about the elephants. The front page was fascinating. It was hard to believe as a child. True. We may need it in our investigation. A royal suite for a favourite pet. Plenty of food to satisfy. Or even the most fastidious. I get a fly in it as children. I doubt it could hold my way today. Hog heaven. A coal gas tank. Enough to pump up an airship. It's seen a lot of use. The blade is worn from grinding. A sailor's knife useful for cutting wet and thick ropes. Fresh signs of impact. A rough landing led to an altercation with this shed.
May I ask for your assistance? Ex excuse me? What? Nice to see you. I'm not sure I know. You were not. A missing pinky, middle-aged. It's none other than Theodore Gilder. Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. A belt from a dressing gown. Curious. A kneecap reduced to splinters. Oh boy, Sherlock. Another death means another question. And we shall answer the question. It's far too interesting to give it up to the police. In a fit of rage, the elephant broke the chain and threw its victim on the ground with a fierce power. Escaping the scene, it pulled the body with it, but dropped it at the gate. At least some of this was witnessed by a third party who was hurled against the shed. The elephant can't have gone too far. I can still track it. Well, suppose you find it. Then what? Push it all the way back to the manor? May I ask for your assistance? That's a question I can answer. Elephant barged into this cart of olive oil. What if we're lucky and he slipped and fell somewhere along the way?
Okay, hear me out. If an elephant falls in the forest and there's no one around to... John, no. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Strange. It was hung with care. The game has escaped us, for now. We'll find a solution to the elephant problem later.
I can always recognize the spirit of a true artist. This young lady has a childish interest for her age. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Theodore Gildon was... Did you kill him? Did you kill the elephant? It's not in the yard anymore. It escaped into the forest. You can't let it go. What if it returns? I highly doubt that, miss. Imogen Gildon. Please, I beg of you. Find that dreadful beast that killed my father. I suppose we do need to learn what happened. Can you tell me what happened, from the very start? I was here, so I didn't see how it began. My father visits the enclosure every morning to wake up Goliath. Today, I heard the elephant scream. I've never heard such a horrifying sound. My heart stopped. I knew something was wrong. I looked through my window and saw how it... how it lifted my father up by his neck. I rushed downstairs. I saw it dragging my father, as if he were a doll. I threw stones at it. It dropped my father's body and charged outside, screaming. Its roar was almost human. I was frightened, so I ran inside and hid here. That is a terrifying experience, Miss Gildon. I'm sorry you had to go through it. Thank you. Goliath must be caught, Mr. Holmes. Well, thank you for the information, Miss Gildon. I did have some questions for your father. Perhaps you might help me with them? I wasn't privy to much of my father's life, and it's very hard to think of anything at all with Goliath still loose. Please, Mr. Holmes. Very well. Do you mind if I ask you more questions if I find anything that might help? Anything to catch that monster! I have nothing to say about this. Had Goliath been aggressive before? It's dangerous, but it was never aggressive near my father. My father would do anything for Goliath. All the elephant had to do was clap its ears. You envied him, the elephant, I mean. Our house is called the House of Ivory. I've heard some people refer to me as the Ivory Girl, and my room stinks of the animal, as if it's me who lives in a pen and not Goliath. It's not envy, Mr. Holmes. It's just... Incredibly difficult to live like this. Did you observe anyone else in the yard? Any of your servants, perhaps? Servants? Do you imagine that we would have any with Goliath? No one wishes to work in this house, even for double pay. I didn't see anyone else. Only my father and that diabolical beast. Miss Gildon, I was on this island ten years ago, and your father knew my mother. I believe I even had the opportunity to ride that balloon outside, but I do not recall seeing you. I lived at my late mother's in Sheffield at the time. I'm in no spirit to reminisce right now. The elephant is out there. You've never heard the name Violet Holmes before? Perhaps your father... Please, Mr. Holmes. With that beast roaming free, I can't think of anything. Very well. Who's a cute bird? She packed as much as she could carry. False idols, oh, sounds utterly dreary.
Uh, the same dull poses on all romantic photographs. So idyllic. Enjoy your happily ever after before it stales. Hey, Sherry, we need to talk. You found false idols. We need to find the remaining two. What does bazooka even mean? Would this paper be good for anything but blowing one's nose on? They're not rubbish, Sherry. There's something more. I'm serious. Very well. I doubt it'll be worth it, but I will find them for you, John. You'll thank me later. They're some of the most imaginative books I've ever read. What did you say? Speaking aloud helps me think. A commendable effort to barricade the windows. These bags of yours, it looks as if you've packed your entire room. Were you planning on going somewhere? My partner and I, we wanted a change, a fresh start abroad. But now I have to stay here, here, an orphan. I found this. Who's this young lad next to you, your faithful knight? Paul. He's my pirate. He's not really a pirate. I just call him that. It probably sounds very silly. Your secret is safe in my hands. Does Paul work somewhere? What is his surname? His name is Paul Perks. He and his yacht Whirlpool are the champions of the Salacia Yacht Club. He sails there. I'll show you where it is on the map if you need to meet him. A yachting champion? Oh, well, that will be a first. I prefer dry land. And so does my suit. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. How can you read something like this? It's hard to swallow, and that's not due to the hard cover. You're hardly serious. Any library without Nabe and Laura is incomplete. If you can read, then these books are an absolute must. Love and adventure. They're about life. Oh, I wasn't aware that exploding pyramids were a part of daily life on Cordona. You haven't seen life, so you might try reading about it at least. Nicest spot in the room. Mr. Gildon spent hours of his life right here. Staring at an elephant's backside. What a wonderful life. Relatively functional choice to replace the finger. Oh, the pungent stench of an animal. Did Theodore seek some pink elephants with this? I think Miss Gildon has barely matured. I think they were closer than you and me, John. I'm hurt.
His second child? An apparent son and heir, I'd say. A catchy title. A partnership annulled with a single stroke of a pen. What's so special about this place? Another elephant? I should take a photograph of the plants. I don't want to carry them around. to see her young and smiling. From before Mycroft was born, our family loves to prod at the past. Holmes's desire to rake up the past is hereditary. Quite the spectrum. From the history of the Roman Empire to conspiracy theories of the French Revolution. And, uh, which part of the elephant is in here? It's quite pungent. Oh, that. It's elephant sweat. Father believed that it might replace traditional amber grease. Well, that's true entrepreneur spirit. A. Swift, is this name familiar to you? Your father had it removed from this plan. Oh, that's Arthur Swift. I've seen him a couple of times here. He works with my father in the old city, digging up something ancient. He is an archaeologist? That's the word, yes. But to be truthful, I really don't think Mr. Swift is fit to be one. I've just learnt a lot about archaeology from my favourite book series. Oh, they are page-turners. Inspirational, I'm sure, but would you happen to know where this Mr. Swift might be found? I don't, but perhaps you can find out somewhere. My father's work with him is all official. Lots of boring legal papers with signatures and stuff. <laughs>
stop the presses, who is Cordona's handsome stranger? Or knows Baggerspun's local life? Wait, uh, no. Foppish foreigner hides dark past. I, uh, um... Oh, you've made quite the impression already, Mr. Holmes. You care to tell your side of the story? I'm quite certain I have no idea as to what you refer, and I am further certain I have no interest in indulging your gossip. Gossip? The truth will come out, but will only be heard if told well. Scandal, daring do, romance... These are the tools of every good journalist. Nothing travels faster or lasts longer than a great story. Young man, your tale will be told with or without you. My readers demand it. You already knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this newspaper is your little endeavor? Yasmin Sertel, editor-in-chief of the Cordona Chronicle, advocate of the free press, voice of the people, scourge of the silk stocking. Charmed, I'm sure. As an advocate of the free press, I trust you'll permit me to consult your archives? There are gaps in my knowledge of Cordona. Oh, so my work does have merit. Well, I think we can strike a bargain. I shall provide you access, and you let me keep writing about your exploits. So be it. Brooding bachelor builds bridges. Now that's character development. I guess I owe you my gratitude. What can I say? I've always enjoyed working with the homes. They whisper such interesting things. That's the article. Feeling old already? Do you know anything about this? That's a question I can answer.
the champion's whirlpool, pool's bread and butter. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. You should have a warning to cover your ears. Tales of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. Bloodied bandages. Has someone been hurt? Where would a champion hide a key? I hope. To earn big, you have to spend big. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. An interesting place for a message to a champion. Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. Mr. Gildon wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. A box full of darts, each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. An expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving. Undeniably psychotropes. Not for toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, oh, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. 
You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. So, a woman wishes to become a real criminal, and smuggling is a stepping stone towards that? Is there not enough prestige in yachting? Or is it easier to compete with other fools like yourself? Everyone has a starting pistol, just shoot and run. Don't say a word. I don't know where you're getting half of this nonsense, but you're on some thin ice here that I'm willing to crack. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. Time for you until next month. Take a rest, my f the snuff's ready. I couldn't miss the party. now. Go for it. No more crime for you until next. Give him the pepper. Oh, don't cry. The snuff's ready. This guy. No more crime for you. I will end you. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice.
Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps, then, don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Oh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. You're asking for trouble with this smuggling business. You'd better leave it before they smuggle you out in a barrel. Don't patronize me. I've only ever had trouble with law-abiding citizens like Gildan and you. Never bandits. So ask me anything you want, and then get out of my sight. I don't know what this means. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal? Say, hmm, an elephant? I've never tried. But I have wondered. It seems as though Theodore Gilden hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words, or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. 
What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that Cortona has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoilt girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me, it was frightening. I'm clueless. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what this means. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this... An installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures. Why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist.
I don't have any thoughts on this. I don't have any thoughts on this. Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that. But don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door. Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. He's even putting up posters, poor man. Losing it may be the death of him. Look who's here. Oh, I'm fine. He's even putting up post. Interested in some Cordona news? Check the front page. You won't regret it. The best antiques in the district.
Does it look remotely familiar to you? Should it? Concentrate, Sherry. A large crowd gathered. I was here, young and passionate about the truth. Mycroft stood close to me. He was keen on my attending every official event that I might prepare myself for the Crown service. Lucky for you, that was the last time he did it. There was a stage here, a tribune. The governor gave his speech there. He was lying through his teeth and nobody noticed, or didn't want to, but I noticed. I was extremely irritated by his lies. I shouted my opinions very loudly for everyone to hear. The crowd went wild. Mycroft was angry but calm. He led me away from the stage. told me that I should keep my mouth shut, that silence is golden. I couldn't stand for that. Behold, Sherlock Holmes's famous adherence to justice was born here. The treasures await you. Collect them all and return for more. Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the Chief Archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct. And now that we've met, I can see that is true. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat.
Yes, of Cordona. The treasures await you. Collect them all. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the day. You're being an eyesore. No entry for you. Cordona's legendary pirate, the Robin Hood of the place. Do you recall it, John? I do. I wonder if... What is that?
The market square. Beating heart of the old city. Uh, I wonder if they still sell that. Stop blocking the view. Nice affordable cloth. Let's pick something that suits you. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? Do you know how I started my day? With a fry-up. Bacon, sausages, eggs, and I could have eaten everything twice over. You shouldn't eat all that for breakfast. Your stomach won't last. But it does show that you're dedicated. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Stop loitering and get inside. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? The ivory baths. Everyone is looking forward to the grand opening. Who told you this nonsense? Why would you contaminate history with this base desire for leisure? Ah. We are looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. This is our goal, to find the artifacts of the early Roman Empire. Let's continue.
I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything, always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. I bet that tomb is worth a lot of money. Are you not here for that? See, young man, how quickly you get distracted by the promise of treasure. You cannot appreciate the importance of my work. But you clearly have little or no money. Old clothes, untended wounds, you have no one beside you. That's the price of discovery. I have to surround myself with fools like you who wish only to feed their stomachs instead of their brains. I was just asking. It is uh, my curiosity. I cannot control it uh, sometimes. Uh, don't let me go, sir. If you'll just stop asking stupid questions, I won't have to fire you. So get to work! And you better find something useful. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Oilcloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. A plan for this whole operation. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. This reminds me of my father's room. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin.
goddess? A mother. Someone's wife. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the thriller statues look like. Swift lost his temper when he learned what... I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. of darts, handy against rodents of all kinds. you think you're doing? Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir. What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked? I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. 
eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gilden made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. Moving on. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Moving on. Moving on. Gildan's elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? 
Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. Moving on. I've nothing to add. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildan? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. You have a weakness for nostalgia? Or, rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. This fabric will work.
it might fall an elephant. Mrs. Nini seemed to know us sewing inside out. Uh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. Say, madam, I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Signor Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in riddles. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's a masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. game is on. So, what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker? Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. You forgot about your new friends, Sherlock. Nabe and Laura. You won't reunite the trilogy. Oh, are you enjoying torturing me? Those are your friends, John. I have a case to solve. Well, it's up to you. But I think you'll regret it. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. How could anyone resist? I knew a lady once who said just that.
too bad I'm not an elephant. Take your time, Sherry. That deserves a slap and then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. Is the meaning of this? Why are you bringing it here? I won't allow you to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. itself while running through the forest. Peaceful and compliant, almost a gentleman. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. There's something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising.
Did it feel good killing Theodore Gildon after the humiliation and threats? What? I thought you were blaming Goliath for that. No, no, I think you killed Theodore Gildon. Goliath is, unfortunately, a victim of circumstance. I'm far better than to kill Gildon. Believe me. You see, I managed to capture the elephant. Goliath had a dart stuck in his hide, similar to the ones that you used to kill rodents. My guess is that you used Goliath. A dart can kill a mouse or human, but for an elephant, it's not enough. Strychnine is a powerful stimulant and convulsant. Once the drug was in the bloodstream, Goliath became extremely agitated and so blinded by the flow of energy that he killed his owner. And my dart is responsible for that. I'd rather use my hands. Yes, there would have been fewer variables, but after the attack on you, your condition didn't allow for a direct confrontation. So, you used what you had. That's not what happened. Anyone might have the same set of darts as I do. They're not expensive. But not everyone knew Theodore and had access to his property. You were at the crime scene at the precise moment when Gildan died. I was not. I was visiting the doctor after the attack on me. Ah, of course, where no one saw you. That's an inconvenience. But in any case, the person who was there met the rage of the elephant. One was struck by the gate with such impact that they were thrown into the shed. The knife fell out. The bruises on your elbow match the contour of the hole in the shed. But I told you where my bruises came from. And I heard you, but you didn't catch my words. A bosun's knife was found there, a very specific tool commonly used in your field. That's only your assumption. I... I was never there. I mean, I was, but not when this happened. I can understand why you killed Mr. Gildon. He saw you with his daughter. He checked up on you, yachtsman, smuggler, and a woman. He went so far as to hire some thugs to attack you. Theodore knew your weakness, your career. He forced you into a corner. You're a survivor. You were prepared for the worst, but Theodore surpassed even your worst-case scenario. So you responded accordingly. I've earned everything myself. Every victory, every trophy, every manga. I achieved all of it without murder. I don't need to kill in order to win. And you weren't afraid that he would reveal your secret to the owner of the yacht club or your competitors? I can control my fear. Trust me, I wouldn't have become a professional athlete otherwise. I revealed many truths and lies concerning Gildan. One banal fact is that he was a bitter and angry man who acted according to his own desires and impulses. Such people are dangerous, they are unpredictable, and value their own comfort more than anything and anyone. The same as you, Paul. Are you out of your mind? You're a gambler, smuggler, and actor. You indulge your self-importance. Such egocentricity and impulsivity is frightening. I won't allow you to play with someone else's life. You are under arrest. Wait. At least tell Imogen. Tell her where I am. I think she deserves a space without you. I heard you can gamble on racing in prison, only it's rat racing. No yachts. Goodbye, Paul. Why did you pick my Paul? Out of all the people on this island. Just when I needed someone I could rely on. Believe me, I saved you. I found the true murderer. Would you really choose to live with the person who took your father's life? You took away the pillar I was relying on. Paul was my only hope. You've destroyed it. It was Paul who destroyed it, not me. I was merely the fact checker who discovered the real culprit. And now about that elephant. Oh yes, Goliath. You did nothing about it. I had to deal with it. Fortunately, there was a real man wanting to help me. He agreed to buy Goliath and relocate him to his property. I suppose I must congratulate you. I'd rather you leave. But first, here are my father's belongings. Some of them have information about your mother. Take them and leave me be. I appreciate it, Miss Gildon. I assure you, I only wanted to find the true perpetrator. Perhaps. Or perhaps you found a convenient scapegoat. Goodbye. I truly hope you meet more honest people in the future. Take care.
My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull. Well, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. I had a surprise for my mother. You had a shovel with you, John. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece of it. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona, and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes. It came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor, and your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Her things are still here. Presumably Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. Look what I found. The White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? Oh, nice move. 
You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. Straps on the bed. It just doesn't look right. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not.
It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. Oh, it brings back some memories. Broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing was completely stained. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. Hey, Sherry. I promise. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. My, my mother, she, she was not just ill, but... Mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John! Every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. <laughs> No. But can we at least leave it for another day? Well, history tells us these memories are triggered by our investigation of other matters. 
I suspect it could not be forced even if I so desired. Thank you. How are you feeling about all this? Tell me, I'm not the only one reeling. In the end, little has changed. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait, did you hear that? Yes, metallic salts. What is this sailor doing here? With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You could call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose? You're a fast learner, sir. I believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favourite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink, Unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist, and I would suggest rather a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. Home sweet home, Sherry.
Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific. I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. You sure you don't like art, Sherry? Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's going to have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. A simplistic attempt at provocation. Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. A handprint of the thing from another world. Plus it looks fresh and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Sodden and mold ridden. One presumes deliberately. A true artist never shows an unfinished piece. Old and hasn't been used for a long time. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints, size nine and a half. The parasites of creativity. 
or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, grim composition. Unflinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. A Malpalbot. A Malpalbot. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a coal moustache. Ugh, oh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room, but the vandalism was a cover for the theft. These are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Extravagant paintings have been left to rot in a basement. A commentary on decay and the crumbling of society, correct? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, What's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But, Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement, above all others, is objective and rational thought. I see, then, why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or, perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Aha. Uh -huh. Mr. Vogel, I have confirmed that the intruder was an average-sized, flexible, malpal smoker with a limp. As it happens, the vandalism was a cover. The true intent was to steal a painting without your knowledge. The fact is, one of the pieces from the Wild Room is not in the wreckage. What? That is extraordinary. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. 
Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My. Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belonged to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm, indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news, or at least with a good story. Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? I believe I am, but to be very clear, Miss Sirtle, my interest extends to the message and not to the messenger. Hmm. So he claims he's not a gal sneaker, seducing women everywhere he goes. Perhaps the truth is even more scandalous? Please spare me the speculation and return to the matter at hand. A gang of smugglers, the Eels, have Cordona in their clammy grip. The British Empire can abide it no longer. Mycroft insists they be disbanded. But this organization only falls with the capture of their odious leader, Friedrich Panzer. And note well, I did say capture, not kill. Inside your envelope is a map marked with the eel's warehouses. But alas, we do not know in which Friedrich Panzer resides. Hmm. So even Mycroft has his limits. Indeed. 
You must be sure to identify the correct warehouse before entering, because once one is compromised, the other's occupants will scatter. Here are all the files, and feel free to use the archive too. Again, do not enter the wrong location, nor see any harm done to Friedrich Panzer. Miss Ertle, if you're quite done with the redundant instructions, I shall get to work. Well, that's perfect. Tortured hero lashes out after rejected romance. Tomorrow's edition will be a sensation. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the... I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Deary, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write information bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police. Nice affordable clothes. Let's pick something that suits you. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Boniface, sweetie, is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. 
or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. A normal kitchen knife. Could be the murder weapon. The chest has been searched. Aunt May whiskey, brandy bucks. Quite a collection he had here. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot see it with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. It appears the wine was truly awful. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called Expressionism. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him.
It's time for some chemical magic, John. doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John? If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know, crimes and such like, daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up. But the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation. And the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse, all right? Stick to the character, tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Thank you. 
Whew, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Are you able to help me? Don't be angry with me, sir, but I don't know. Could you help me? Eh? Of course I know. To cut a long story short. Beasts! Murderers! They're completely livid. First they come for it. Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here, so I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. 
You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm with City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest, but in return I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her, and I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Chooksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like Prover. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewkesbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them, too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees, at least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Hmm. Coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here.
A steel dirk, sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. A violent death. This man, limping. Coal dust, I think we're onto something here, John. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. Malpal, soaked with salt water. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Someone bled profusely here. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. Carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. No hint of blood or impact. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. Someone was dragged against their will. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I'll use it to create a solution. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. I've collected all the ingredients, now to prepare the first aid solution.
Thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now, remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A heavy boot with a worn-out sole. A man's footprint. Clearly a left hand print here. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. If they find out about the passage... If they find out about the passage, everything will go to hell. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Perhaps we should sniff around in the camp a little more thoroughly. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. 
the thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clock can make any difference? in this place. Who knows, John? You still here? I've already told you all I've learned. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. Could you help me? They often take us from the camp to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way to get a glimpse of freedom. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. 
the dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away, but we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Nayla, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Nayla? <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. My long shot. Nayla doesn't want his meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Still here? The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck, two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right?
What a lovely man this Bernadotte is, eh, Sherry? Can't wait until we get to meet him. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? You defiled a girl who was with child. Don't even pretend that you regret what took place. Do you wonder why I came here? It is because I am disgusted with people like you, and the only way in my mind to rid the world of your ilk is to see you hanging from the gallows. All right, all right. Is it about money, as you said in the letter? I have it, all right? There's no need for violence. I've never written a single word to you. As you can see, I have a more direct approach. That letter, it wasn't from you. So what do you want? Answers, to start with. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? <laughs> That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just bad circumstance.
The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people. I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake, but I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. This earthenware came a long way from the Staffordshire potteries. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. Porcelain friend for every child. Shipped from Cape Town. The wine route from colony to colonies. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo. This is private property. You lost something. 
I'm here to discuss business with Mr. Bernadotti. I tried the front door, but... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! I did try to resolve this peacefully. Jerry, look! This seems familiar. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Masks. Traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. V.H. Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll shred you to pieces. Go ahead. Make my day. Right, so. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear. I've got to. It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh. Wow, that was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. The Bernadotti Company Limited Trade Network reaches the most distant colonies of the Great Empire. It must be very convenient for a man like Bernadotti. I suppose it's Mr. Bernadotti with our fine governor. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. So, you cut through all the guards just to talk to me. You come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're ready, I'd hate to intrude. Bad news. The thug you sent to the refugee camp only succeeded in stabbing himself. His next and final journey will be to the morgue. All oh, your horses. Who the hell are you? Sherlock Holmes. And you are Niccolo Bernadotti, a smuggler, kidnapper, and notorious cutthroat, among other things. Few men would dare waltz into my office and address me like that. You are either overconfident or unintelligent. This is private property. Give me one reason why I should not shoot you on the spot. I am sure my friends at the station would call it self-defense.
I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any while I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you are hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. 
The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it, if you want. Have you thought it all through? Almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the Crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician how he performs his tricks. But how can I believe you? Ugh. I presume you do believe in my selfishness. The initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other than the British envoy, savior and protector of those in need. It's a win situation for me too. Now, what about the photograph? You deserve to be punished, but the greater good is what matters here. I won't bargain it for justice for Naylor. I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes.
Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more then. What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. Previously you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh dear, I'd hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Correct. With whom do I have the pleasure? Emilio Estevo. Happy to make your acquaintance. I am here on behalf of Mycroft, your brother. He is on his way to Cordona. In the meantime, he requests your assistance with a sensitive matter. My orders are to provide you with the details. You have my attention, Mr. Estevo. Mark Ridley, the son of General Arthur Ridley, is being blackmailed. Suffice to say, the compromising material is of a delicate nature. The matter is of no small importance to the Crown, especially given the status quo on Cordona. What does Mycroft want me to do? Retrieve the blackmail material? No, sir, nothing of the sort. Mark Ridley is meeting the blackmailer atop the old city bridge tower. You shall observe from a distance, then establish the blackmailer's identity. Do not attempt to arrest him. We'll handle it from there. Saving the best for yourself? Fine. There is a cafe just over the bridge that provides a good vantage point. Please report to me when you are done. I'll be waiting for you here, and remember, discretion is of the essence. It's a bizarre object, and yet oddly familiar.
Did you just remember something? Yes. A room full of curiosities and artifacts. I think I can find it in the manor. Sherlock. So, you continue to pursue the imaginary. I had hoped you might have got all this out of your system by now. Mycroft. What are you doing here? Get out of my house! It's my house, actually. I've come to bring you back. I have no interest in returning, let alone with you. I know you lied about Mother all these years, claiming she was merely ill, but she was unstable. She never had tuberculosis. She was not recuperating, but mentally deteriorating, and you never once thought to tell me. How dare you? I shall not indulge this petulant tantrum. You can just tire yourself out and then slink back to London with your tail between your legs. Just tell me everything! I'm an adult now. I... Show me the basic courtesy of an explanation. You know I will find out eventually. The goal was stability, and that's what you got. The right thing for everyone was to try and move on from her passing. The consequences of one's actions determines what is right or wrong. Yes, exactly. The ends justify the means. After leaving Cordona, Sherlock, you had a normal childhood. In London, I was able to support you, guide you, shape you into a fine and productive young man. You have so much potential, so much to offer society. But that's not the end. Now I've found the truth, and it has shattered everything I knew about her, about you, and about myself. I feel unstable because of you. Your actions were not justified. Lying never is. Oh, grow up, Sherlock. It was a white lie which has as much use in the realm of the interpersonal as the international. It is time you come to accept that some things are bigger than yourself. Oh, you are full of it. You like to pretend you care about the big picture, but it's just an ego trip. You like knowing more than others. You like greasing palms and rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful. You like having eyes and ears everywhere. The fact it helps the nation is incidental because all you care about is yourself. It's true. I have agents everywhere, including Cordona. If you weren't so damn stubborn, you'd realize that means I'm only here for you. I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. Impossible. It must have been something else. Oh, of course, that mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us. The workers took the artifact and placed it into the Cabinet of Curiosities. It became part of Mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. Ah yes, my mother's studio. 
She was an authenticator, and this was her cabinet of curiosities. I never saw the point. What does it matter if some artifact is real or not? It still exists. One of the most ridiculous fakes I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. I remember this cozy blanket. It was perfect for a wigwam. Oh, that was a joy to build them. Imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. Watkinson and Holman, Chapter 1, by Wallace Diorum. Oh, Mycroft. You always act so serious, but then reach tripe like this. John, if I remember correctly, you couldn't put this book down. Another fake Holy Grail. Its owner claims to be the heir of King Arthur. Scarcely believable. He also insisted a deadly rabbit was hunting him. Mother said this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish Viscount. So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. The full plate armour of Sir Robert Saunford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armour is armour, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Maybe and this one was this. brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets. The so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. He even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. 1852, Bingley, West Yorkshire. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. Reliable and driven, I recognize my cross handwriting. Officer Luciano J. Placido. Carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. This drawer was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe to... Today's the day. Ah, oh, Sherry. Ah, the memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. He closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him.
The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if... A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? I think this is what we're looking for. We made it. So what's there? Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met. Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. Single malt whiskey. Mycroft's favourite. This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. Otto Richter. Clearly, it was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan Mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. I'm starting to remember something. I use this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. Books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface, I feel it.
Come on, Sherry. Let's go outside. Wait. Did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan. Amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. Sherry? An invitation that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. Welcome, sir. I... Enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. All right. What if I write an article about these people here? Can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? Do you know what was here before Manchiosa's family bought? That's what I like about this party. Bring me more dirt, Sherry. One more piece, and I can expose these base hedonists. Nancho's had to enforce the masks after the scandal.
I'll pin them down with this scoop. Thank you, Sherlock. Sherlock, friend, I wasn't sure you'd come. Werner, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. And what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Those who know me would say I'm incapable of it. <laughs> Nonsense. I refuse to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> you may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. A time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you with a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's wine, of course. It's something to smoke. Or perhaps an artificial paradise? Yes, something more spiritual. A potentiator to sharpen the mind. A 7% solution of, well, that'd be telling. But you must try it. My mind already operates at a far higher level than most. I struggle to believe anything could improve it. My ultimate duty is to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. Of course I do. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. <laughs> That's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next? Visit the victims? Ensure justice is served in the courts? And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, just like truth. There is little to be gained from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. Now I must insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. I am perfectly capable of coping with myself without medical assistance. Then I shall press you on it no further. But please, do not refuse my gift. Take it with you as a souvenir of this special night. Souvenir of what, exactly? But, all right, if only to put the matter to bed. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Werner? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. Was he here this whole time? Oh, 
A blunt force trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage. This crude tattoo partially covers a slave branding. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. This worm-like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. He died right here. Care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little exuberant. It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes, some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts, but I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh dear, did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Mancios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. All right, then pull yourself together, Werner. How did you discover the body? In between guzzles of alcohol, I was set to perform in a fecundity ride with Fabio and came to inquire further. It was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Mancios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then we were... Filling time. Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat wallets fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance, and more. When you discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later, only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. Mr. Manchos is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. 
So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents sky of the earth. As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principal. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the intercourse is not? I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but it would explain the colour of your cheeks. The fertility rite marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh, yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer, too. I haven't seen her today, actually. The ointment smells mouse-like. I presume it is an aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus drawn in a hurry. The sign reminds me of the astrological symbol for Mars. Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? An open wound spoiled the carpet. A sturdy bottle met a not-so-sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. The wounded person was here for some time. A bloody handprint on an armchair. A person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. There appear to be no further traces leading to the altar. Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. The pitcher is empty, but with puddles around it. Blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Props, decorations and tools for a more detailed set. Similar to the guests' robes, apart from the bloodstains. Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio, Manchos. Would you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. This is a different ritual.
How can anyone accept such behavior? A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. So, Sherry, do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I can deduce what happened here. Bottle was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloodied robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you all right? You're on the floor, not moving. I think I know what happened here. I'm starting to put the pieces together. Fabio was stabbed. I see nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone, and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all. The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. Goodness, Sherlock, they made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood. Kurt Manchios, I presume. I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I, 
don't want anyone to hear us. I need to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio, and you had access to it. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guests somewhere, and Santos... Oh, yes. He will be busy with the servants. Or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Freeze, filth. You're under arrest. committed a crime, and now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience. Your grace. I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? Thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in his letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes. Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? Is there something wrong with that? Do you know something about her? I was working on the paperwork of her case while you still had milk on your lips. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? You must help me. It would mean a great deal to me if you could find any information about that day. Huh. Got you hooked, right? You know what? Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Oswald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr. Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. If you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Let's make a start, then. Partner. I'm glad we managed to get the scoop before the raid. contract to solve the case.
Look, I found Verna. Have you considered Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. He could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. Did you hear? Good night. Your ticket, please, if you want me to help you. I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. Ah, oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials K.M. in the corner. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. That's not for bedtime reading. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. A key to the altar room. An emergency kit for boredom. Not the time for privacy. Werner's personal sketchbook. Thank you, officer. I recognize the key from the altar room among these. Mr. Pinchetti, 
A pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. You are the major domo of a rich mansion, and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing. You hide, under heavy makeup, a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means. Do you have money troubles? I do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. One can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? I don't actually know. Perhaps from a guest? Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domo? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to die and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. She died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship.
Werner, are you all right? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. Ha! <laughs> what did you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway, I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder, suppose you couldn't get the proof to your truth. Would you tell a lie to the guard that enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? There are lines I will not cross, Werner. I will do my best to secure your release, but with proof, not deception. Really? How many white lies have you told on this island? Why not for me? Why not another? That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. Do not give up hope. I can't follow you here. I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I can't follow you here. I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you? Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. You are Matista, Fabio's friend. This body, yes, it's Matista. But it's a mere shell that will die someday. Just like Fabio. Please accept my condolences for your friend. Thank you. I'm just here to ask questions and find Fabio's murderer. It will not bring Fabio back. Fabio and yourself were slaves, am I correct? You have a similar branding on your body. Yes. It was a long time ago. I couldn't help but also notice fresh cuts upon your forearms. The cuts helped me to forget my past, to cover the old wounds and hide them. How did you escape? Something happened. One night the master fell down the stairs. 
I made him fall, and he died. We ran away that day. We managed to get on a ship and traveled here, to Gordona. Fabio and I started a new life here. It was very hard at first, but it became better with time. Until today. The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite, sometimes. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchios? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Good day, Mr. Manchios. I am Constable Oswald's partner in this investigation. Be quick and gentle. Some of your colleagues are untrained boars. Although I don't mind meeting young officers, the new blood here. 
If you cooperate in finding Fabio's murderer, there will be no need to meet with the Boars again. That voice? Werner's friend? You're the policeman. What a disappointment. Only an undercover agent can scour a ditch full of deviants. I am a consulting detective, although I'm capable of replacing the entire department through my consultations. Sharp-tongued, I like it. May I presume this tongue will get us out of this trouble? I would be so indebted and glad to repay you. Nothing's changed. I'm looking for the murderer. That's the only way to get us out of trouble. But it shouldn't take much time, correct? We're all busy, after all. I need to examine you first. You are a little over the top with your use of makeup, Mr. Manchios. Is it so difficult for you to acknowledge your age? Well, Sherlock, that's easy for you to say to an old man when you look as though you are barely 15. But still, it shouldn't be an issue for someone of your status. For people of my age, it isn't an issue, no. But the younger ones can be so afraid of wrinkles and grey flecks. I have to adapt. Such a methodical man who cares for his body but misses the soap under his fingernails. Are you so impatient, or perhaps even impulsive? I wouldn't call myself that. Silly little details. If I missed it, it wasn't important. Or rather, it was less important than who or what I was focused on. What was Fabio like? His personality, his habits? Anything you can tell me? He was the brightest star of my parties. Young, magnetic, and full of energy. I don't even want to mention his beauty. Otherwise, I'll be sobbing. An expensive champion, I imagine. His performances were flawless. He deserved his payment. Do you think he was murdered because of money? Possibly. What about the other guests? Were they used to opening their wallets as well? I wouldn't restrict my guests from anything. I'm sure Fabio received a few coins from others for his services. Mr. Vogel told me a little about your parties, but I would like to know more directly from you. I'm all yours, Sherlock. You have me arrested and locked here with you alone. I'd like to know who you usually invite to your parties. Free minds who are able to leave reality for an evening, who can taste forbidden fruit without prejudice. There is nothing that quite spices up life like these parties. Assuming one is old enough and has worked many years for the good of one's country. Oh, all true laborers, I see. Why did you invite Mr. Vogel as your special guest? He's a pretty fellow. He's capable of surprising the public. He has a talent for saying words that no one else would wish to either say or hear. I suppose I can't argue with that. He is a free addition to the eccentricity of the party, which is fine by me, as long as it enhances my party. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high.
I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. Do you have any idea who tipped off the police to raid your mansion, Mr. Manchios? Of course. It was you. I could even say you Sherlocked me in here. A good guess, but the wrong one. The fellow who did that was Mr. Pinchetti, your major domo. What? Santos? But how could he even know? If he's not the murderer himself. The ungrateful swine. He has dared to besmirch my reputation. Not a very eloquent choice of words. What should I call him then, since he's a snitch? Make him talk, Sherlock. I'm quite certain he knows more about the murder than he has told the police. You bought an expensive pair of cufflinks for Fabio. Were they his price? Or were they a tip for an exclusive show? It was pure business. Fabio escorted me a few times. I was merely showing my gratitude. This pair cost a small fortune. You must be extremely grateful, then. Tell me more. You've thrust a knife in an exposed nerve, Sherlock. Yes, he was my protege and my beacon also. With my experience and his beauty, we could have achieved anything. I had faith in him. I would have made him. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Manchios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problem. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? For what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel. He had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children. You had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. 
That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust, love so cruel and painful, and Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona's society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. The young performer played with your emotions. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way you would have liked. You wanted to be loved, but Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You struck him, and then you staged the ritual. You planted the letter in Vogel's pocket, and attempted to set up Matista. What poppycock? Sherlock, stop this game now. There is no stop word, Mr. Manchios. Relax and enjoy it. I'll pass the remainder of this case to Constable Oswald. He'll know what to do with you. I have a name for you. Kurt Manchios. Is that so? The master of the Sabbath? The man himself. Mr. Manchios couldn't stand to lose control over his lover. A deadly revenge that deserves a proper sentence. I have all the evidence to charge him. A degenerate and a murderer. I'll make a name thanks to that for sure. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered the discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones, including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry, it looked... Oh, you did it, Sherlock! The case is closed and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo! It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decision? It was the best decision I could obtain. The truth must be told in the way it is most acceptable. You're making progress, Sherlock. I was right to believe in you. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? 
Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I am failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous. Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems, and power. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love, and sanity, and it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? Oh, yes. It's a struggle, but yes, we can make our own decisions. That's what I fight for. And what an endless fight it is. Will you ever give yourself a break, Sherlock? You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until then... I shall bid you adieu. Did you hear Basilio Copello is in jail? Sherry, Sherry, please listen to me. Sherry. John, I always listen to you. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go through. I don't know what is beyond this door, but I can feel it buzzing, angry, like a fly at the window. I know. I can sense it too. You locked away this memory for a reason. There is only pain here. Pain? And truth? You do not need to suffer either. There is so much more we can do on Cordona, so many others we can help. There is no coming back from this. John, my anima, my brother, there is nothing more important in this moment than this truth. I know you fear for me, but my path was set long ago. I can no more step off it than I can ask the avalanche to roll back uphill. Just. Please be careful, Sherry. I love you. Quite. Come on. We'll go together. Why didn't I remember we had such a big garden? Maybe you forgot it for your own good. Mother? That's from Mother's favorite tea set. 
What is it doing in here? thinking about is everything all right ah yes the statue of Merope my mother was trying to restore it pity she never had the opportunity to finish Remember this artifact from Mother's collection. Mother's work journal. I liked poring over the detailed pages and reading about my parents' collection. It informs my... No. I have made my decision. She must be sent to a legitimate medical facility. I will not let her hurt Sherlock. What? Master Holmes, you do not understand. That will be all. I expected to have left the house by week's end. Sherry, say something. Can you hear me? You're scaring me. Sherry, come here, darling. Coming, Mother! This was for my mother, wasn't it? I remember how we came to the garden for a breath of fresh air. Take me to my flowers, Sherry. They must already be in bloom. As you wish, Mum. I bet you missed the fresh air, didn't you? Terribly. The sun is far brighter than I remember. But I like it. We can walk each day from now on, if you want. That would be wonderful. Just look at them. The stars of the Earth. Even the sky must be jealous of their beauty. Indeed. Mother, would you like to go around the water? That would be perfect. I always wanted such a nice pond in London. It looks so peaceful. Mycroft knew you would like it. We should put some fish in it. Don't you think? How about some carp? That's a nice idea. Let's visit your father's tree. It grows so fast, just like you. We could even build a tree house in it. <laughs> yes, Sherry. your father. Could you call him out, please? Mom! He's... 
I'm sorry. He passed away. He's gone. No, he's not. I'm telling the truth. Did you forget again? No. Don't you dare say such things. You are a liar like all the others. Mother! Don't call me that. You are fooling me. No! Mommy hurts! My son would never lie. Mom, stop! Who are you? Reveal yourself! Please, to whom? It's me, Sherlock! You are not my Sherry! Get me my stuff, I can't you! Sherlock, Sherlock, can you hear me? Come on, wake up. Get off me. Sherry, you knew, and more than that, you hid it from me. You couldn't bear the truth, Sherlock, so I shouldered it for you. I took your pain, your horror, you. It was your idea, the, the sedative, that was you. She was hurting us, Sherry. I, I couldn't bear to see you suffer. So you killed my mother. My worst impulses, my darkest thoughts, they're you. You were a lie, John, a fiction, a crutch. No, I was... I was a friend. Sherlock, please. Sherlock? What? Are you okay? I don't know. I told you not to come, Sherlock. Where is he? Who? Your friend, John. He's beside you. Was all this worth it? Is he worth it? Why, Why is, is he, he here? here? I think... In his own way, he was trying to protect me. A truth I couldn't bear. But now I must face it. <clears throat> whoa, 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 Sherry. What are you doing? There is only one way through. Through what? What do you mean? My entire life, my work, my mind, has been compromised by a malignant force, by a perversion of rationality. By you, John. You're a tumor. You're a poison, Sherlock. And like a tumor, you must be excised for the health of the patient. No. 
Oh, th this is the lie, Sherry. I protected you. I am your friend, your brother. You know me. You know me. I was always there for you. When your mother lashed out, I took the hit. When you were alone, I held you. She was sick. I just... She needed to calm down. I... I helped her. You killed her. No. Yes. No. But it was not meant... Please. Please. I'm scared. I think, uh, on the balance of things, no. That is good news. To be unaffected by today's events would place you in a different pathology entirely. Your time on Cordona is over, Sherlock. Tomorrow we shall board a vessel back to London, and all this... It stays here. He's, he's gone. He's gone, Mycroft. I, I, need, I needed to take control. He, he would help me, but it was... It was a lie, because, because, but he's gone. I knew, I knew he was wrong. Do you see, I am free. I just had to act. Hmm. Yes. In that respect, you are your mother's son. Why are you here? Closure, I suppose. And to help a friend. You and I are not friends. In a race between the thawing of the ice caps and our friendship, I would buy a boat. Ha! Is that right? I can see it now. I know what you did. What did I do? You... You needled me. From the moment we met, you were searching for weakness. You pushed me to pursue the truth about my mother. You questioned everything I did, everything I believed to... To break me. To blur truth and fiction, reality, morality. A saboteur in silk. Was it vengeance, Vanna? Or do you prefer Klaus? Excuse me? You are Klaus Richter, Otto's younger brother. Do you hold me responsible for his end? Ha! There was no love lost between me and my brother. I am sure you can relate. Otto was merely the gravity that pulled me into your orbit, or you into mine. Once I met you, I could not keep away. Why? What reason do you have for all this? To help you. You're lying. To show you that you were wrong. More lies. I know you now, Werner. Try again. To see what had happened. Or is that yet another untruth? Does it matter? Take your pick. Who cares? You're my masterpiece. I turned Sisyphus into Ozymandias. You could not see the futility of your quest until I helped you to let go of the rock. And now, nothing beside remains. I remain. Despite you and to spite you. It is a matter of will and power now. Will you overcome this or shall you decay? Oh, on that note, I brought you something. I want nothing more from you. When one wants for nothing, Sherlock, the best thing to get them is something personal. So, 
here you are. Now, please excuse me, but the gallery calls. I'm already conceiving my next project. You really are beautiful. I am all right. I returned to London and enrolled at Cambridge University. Their professors leave something to be desired, or perhaps I simply lack the interest in all but a few lectures. I prefer to spend my time at the local hospital pursuing things of practical use. Medical research, chemical tests and the like. Empirical truths. I try not to think about you. I try not to think about anyone unless it is in the course of an investigation. I've started to help people with their menial mysteries. It keeps the mind occupied. I cannot risk otherwise. I'm not like her. I'm not like you. I am all right. <laughs> I found it! I found it! I found it! And what is that? How far, um, bruises may be produced after death. How are you? You have been in uh, Afghanistan, I perceive. How on earth did you know that? Uh, never mind. The, um, the question now is about bruising. No doubt you see the significance of this discovery of mine. Uh, it is interesting, no doubt, but practically... Why, it is the most practical medico-legal discovery for years. Had we these data sooner, hundreds of men would have paid the penalty for their crimes. Cases oft hinge upon how a man died. Now, we can know which wounds he suffered alive, which occurred post-mortem, and what instrument was responsible. And ergo, one will soon be able to calculate with utmost precision when and where death occurred, sparing the innocent and damning the guilty. Well... Then you are to be congratulated. Indeed. But uh, uh, you came here on business. <laughs> Correct again. I, I am looking for someone with whom to take diggings and heard you were complaining that you could get no one to go halves with you. I have my eye on a suite in Baker Street, which would suit us down to the ground. You don't mind the smell of strong tobacco, I hope? I smoke ships myself. That's uh, good enough. I get in the dumps at times and don't open my mouth for days on end. Just let me alone and I'll soon be right. What have you to confess now? It's best for two fellows to know what bruises each other carries before they begin to live together. My last companion and I... Well, I object to rows because my nerves are shaken. And I get up at all sorts of ungodly hours. <laughs> and I am extremely lazy. I have another set of vices when I'm well. But those are the principal ones at present. Do you include violin playing in your category for rout? <laughs> it depends on the player. A well-played violin is a treat for the gods. A badly played one. Oh, oh, no, that's all right. I think we may consider the thing as settled. Oh, uh, forgive my manners. My attention wavers. Sherlock Holmes. Dr. John Watson. John. Sherlock. Sherlock. Can you hear me? Come on, wake up. Get off me. Sherry, 
You knew, and more than that, you hid it from me. You couldn't bear the truth, Sherlock, so I shouldered it for you. I took your pain, your horror. I... I, I killed my own mother, John. It is unforgivable. It was an accident, Sherlock. She was mad, abusive. You were a child, simply trying to help. How could I... How could she? You were a lie, John. A fiction. A crutch. No, I was... I was a friend. Sherlock, please. Sherlock? What? Are you okay? I don't know. I told you not to come, Sherlock. Where is he? Who? Your friend, John. He's beside you. Was all this worth it? Is he worth it? Why, Why is, is he, he here? here? I think, in his own way, he was trying to protect me. From a truth I couldn't bear. But now I must face it. There is only one thing to be done. What are you talking about? To expect adherence to the principles of truth and justice, but to fail to hold oneself likewise accountable, it would be hypocrisy. My mother died by my hand. I must turn myself into the authorities and face the consequences of my actions. The consequences of your actions? You were a child. She did this to you, not you unto her. You are throwing your life away in an act of moralistic vanity. Think of all you could accomplish for our nation. This is where we differ, Mycroft. To you, the ends justify the means. To me, the means have decided the end. The truth is the truth. Fine, Sherlock. Walk yourself into the police station and pray those men you oft embarrassed hold no grudges. If you're lucky, they'll simply exile you. If not, I'll see you in 20 years. Are you going to berate me too? Try and talk me out of it? As I told my brother, if I cannot demonstrate the character, I chastise others for lacking. Sherry, I think this is something you will have to do yourself. Myself? How do you mean? All I ever did, all I ever wanted, was to protect you from what happened. And now you tell me I was wrong to try, that it was ego or hypocrisy to show a young boy kindness. But it was just empathy, creativity, and love for one's self. So please, please, Sherlock, don't do it. Why? Why can none of you see it? The truth is the truth. A murder is a murder. Tell me, John, why? Because you're breaking my heart. I know you've decided. I know. I just wish you hadn't. I, I'm, I'm sorry, John. All these years we spent together, all the time I took for granted, You'll always be a part of me. No, Sherry. That's the point. I don't think I will. Why are you here?
closure, I suppose. And to help a friend. You and I are not friends. In a race between the thawing of the ice caps and our friendship, I would buy a boat. Ha! Is that right? I can see it now. I know what you did. What did I do? You... You needled me. From the moment we met, you were searching for weakness. You pushed me to pursue the truth about my mother. You questioned it. Everything I did, everything I believed to, to break me, to blur truth and fiction, reality, morality. A saboteur and silk. Was it vengeance, Vernon? Or do you prefer Klaus? Excuse me? You are Klaus Richter, Otto's younger brother. Do you hold me responsible for his end? Ha! There was no love lost between me and my brother. I am sure you can relate. Otto was merely the gravity that pulled me into your orbit. Or you into mine. Once I met you, I could not keep away. Why? What reason do you have for all this? To help you. You're lying. To show you that you were wrong. More lies. I know you now, Werner. Try again. To see what had happened. Or is that yet another untruth? Does it matter? Take your pick. Who cares? You're my masterpiece. I turned Sisyphus into Osmandius. You could not see the futility of your quest until I helped you to let go of the rock. And now, nothing beside remains. I remain. Despite you and to spite you. It is a matter of will and power now. Will you overcome this or shall you decay? Oh, on that note, I brought you something. I want nothing more from you. When one wants for nothing, Sherlock, the best thing to get them is something personal. So, here you are. Now, please excuse me, but the gallery calls. I'm already conceiving my next project. I was prepared to take responsibility for my actions, but again my brother conspired against me. A little diplomatic pressure and the trial was dismissed. Instead, I was exiled from Cordona. Freedom never tasted so bitter. Another perversion of justice at Mycroft's hand. With no means, no home and no purpose, I returned to London. I enrolled at Cambridge University, but few lectures held my interest. I prefer to spend time alone at the hospital laboratory, pursuing truths in chemical form. No one there questions my choices. I have begun to attract a desperate clientele, men that skulk after me pleading for answers to their simple mysteries. At first, the distraction was unwelcome. Now I find myself craving it, lest my mind drift back to the island, to Mother, to John. What was her life worth? How many adulterers and petty thieves will it take to make it right? Can anything? <laughs> I found it! I found it! I found it! And what is that? How far, um, bruises may be produced after death. How are you? You have been in uh, Afghanistan, I perceive. How on earth did you know that? Uh, never mind. The, um, the question now is about bruising. No doubt you see the significance of this discovery of mine. Uh, it is interesting, no doubt, but practically... Why, it is the most practical medico-legal discovery for years. Had we these data sooner, hundreds of men would have paid the penalty for their crimes. Cases oft hinge upon how a man died. Now, 
we can know which wounds he suffered alive, which occurred post-mortem, and what instrument was responsible. And ergo, one will soon be able to calculate with utmost precision when and where death occurred, sparing the innocent and damning the guilty. Well, then you are to be congratulated. Indeed. But uh, uh, you came here on business. <laughs> Correct again. I, I am looking for someone with whom to take diggings and heard you were complaining that you could get no one to go halves with you. I have my eye on a suite in Baker Street which would suit us down to the ground. You don't mind the smell of strong tobacco, I hope? I smoke ships myself. That's uh, good enough. I get in the dumps at times and don't open my mouth for days on end. Just let me alone and I'll soon be right. What have you to confess now? It's best for two fellows to know what bruises each other carries before they begin to live together. My last companion and I... Well, I object to rouse because my nerves are shaken. And I get up at all sorts of ungodly hours. <laughs> and I am extremely lazy. I have another set of vices when I'm well. But those are the principal ones at present. Do you include violin playing in your category for rout? <laughs> it depends on the player. A well-played violin is a treat for the gods. A badly played one. Oh, oh, no, that's all right. I think we may consider the thing as settled. Oh, uh, forgive my manners. My attention wavers. Sherlock Holmes. Dr. John Watson. John. Hmm. 